everybody. So I hope you enjoyed your extended weekend. Uh, this video, we're going to just go over expectations for the week and all these resources, because there's quite a few things here in this module that I want you to go over before you dive right into your personal essay. So last week you did your personal essay outline, and I'm still working on completing the feedback for those. So if I was you, I would suggest um, to work on the writing practice for this week and um, going through all of your resources and things like that before you go into your essay. So that way it gives me time to get you some feedback and you know how to focus on the essay. Or, I mean, if you want to dive right in, that's perfectly fine. And then go back and revise and edit with my feedback, whatever works for you. But I definitely wouldn't submit your personal essay completed until you are, until you've gotten my feedback on that outline. Also, as you're working this week, please feel free to email me with any questions. If you have a paragraph or two or a section that you want me to look over to make sure you're hitting it right, um, if you have any questions or concerns, please email me. I will answer them as quickly as possible to make sure that you are succeeding and doing the best that you possibly can in this course. So the first two things in the module are the personal essay assignment itself. Okay, It's the same exact prompt that you saw in your outline. Everything's there. Um, just reminders on what you are doing, your requirements for that, MLA or APA. So you're just submitting the final draft of this. Make sure you have read this out loud to a friend or to yourself before you submit it. Why I say out loud is when we read in our heads, especially things that we've already written, our brain naturally glances over those errors and fixes them for us in our brain. So then we can just read quickly and go through. But when you read out loud, you hear a lot more of those errors that you wouldn't have just seen. So whether it's spelling or grammar errors or whether it's just kind of phrasing or you lost train of thought and you kind of went off track for a little bit and then eventually came back, when you do something out loud, you're going to hear it. <clears throat> so I would suggest reading it to somebody so that we have two pairs of ears catching for those errors. But reading out loud is one of my top suggestions when it comes to revising your piece. Uh, remember, it's one to two pages, about five to ten paragraphs of that personal essay that of course you can use I in because it's personal. With APA or MLA, you chose that in your APA MLA quiz, which one you're focusing on based on your major. I will be able to tell from your very first page if it's APA or MLA. Remember APA has that cover page, MLA does not. So I'll be grading from what I see on that very front page. If I see a cover page, I'm grading for APA. If I don't see a cover page, I'm grading for MLA. Sorry about that bell sound. Um, so also make sure you're double checking your formatting. You shouldn't have any research in this, so you should not have any in-text citations. You should not have a bibliography or a work cited, but I will be looking at just basic formatting when it comes to one of the two. The other thing I want you to look at, go scrolly down, is this is the rubric. So this is how I'm grading this paper. Make sure you've read this over before you submit and use this rubric to revise and edit your paper. Whoever's helping you revise, if you're doing a peer review for this one, um, I'm not requiring a peer review for this one, but we will do required peer reviews later in the semester. If you're doing some sort of peer review though, use this rubric, give them the rubric, say, hey, please look over this as you're giving me feedback to improve and help within there, okay? Uh, notice here it says APA formatting writing mechanics, that is also MLA, so whichever one you've chosen, I just forgot to write or when I come in the rubric, okay? So this is due at the end of the week, so Friday at 11.59, like most assignments. We also have another practice, and this practice is focused on making sure you understand the expectations and organization of an essay. So in this one, you're going to read My College Education by Scott McLean, which is an example essay, and it should write up... Yep, this one right here. So this is it. So it's like a page and a half essay about the length that you're shooting for in your own essay, okay? Um, and it's another personal essay. So I want you to look over it, analyze it, tell me what the thesis statement is, tell me two details or main ideas from the body of the essay that support the thesis statement. So what main ideas are they choosing? And then based on the conclusion, what was the significant life lesson that the writer learned? So what was the final so what in the conclusion that they ended it with? So you're analyzing another essay as your writing practice this week, which sets you in the mindset for how you should be thinking about your own essays and setting them up. Okay, so back into modules. So these little links that are underneath the personal essay and your writing practice. So here and here, um, they're just the links that are part of those assignments, they're with it. So as you saw, when I clicked into personal essay or when you click into writing practice, the links are inside the assignments as well. 
but I put them out here too, just for easier access if you need them there. So those are your two assignments you're submitting this week. Everything else below are resources to make sure you're doing your best possible work and setting you up for success, okay? So this first one, the Writing for Success sentence structure, when you click on it, it takes you to a PDF, which is this. It is a very lengthy PDF. Notice it's 140 pages. Okay, let me find my mouse. There it is, 140 pages. I do not expect you to read this whole thing. Okay, it is all about grammar. We'll do some focused grammar once I've seen a bit more of your writing as a whole class so I can figure out some common needs uh, within there. But this is just sort of overall grammar. So if you're like, ooh, I forget how to do this, you can come to this, text, this textbook chapter and look at it more specifically. So I know one that I see a lot of mistakes with is misplaced and dangling modifiers. So if I was you, I'd make sure to go through that one. Uh, subject verb agreement is also a pretty common error that I see in a lot of writing, no matter the age of the writer. So I might go to that section of it to double check that I know what I need to do when it comes to my grammar and set up for that, okay? So this is a resource for you to use if you have a question, okay? But don't think that you need to read this entire chapter. I'm not asking that. Um, the next resource is organize an essay, you writing another PDF from the same uh, textbook that we use for this section of writing. And I've just got to find my link. There it is. So chapter six, organizing the essay. This is only 18 pages and I do expect you to read the whole thing. I want you to make a very poignant choice uh, or very critical, specific choice on how you're organizing your essay. So where there's chronological order, spatial order, and you started to think about that with the outline of your essay itself, but you might change it this week. Your essay outline is not set in stone. You didn't write it in stone. You can go back, delete, rearrange, set it up differently, the way that works best for your topic and for the goal of the writing piece. So going through this, making notes on organizing, and you're gonna come back to this idea of organizing with every essay that we work on because depending on the topic of the essay, the purpose of the essay, we're gonna organize it differently. So this is a resource I want you to take notes on, have, read over, and keep it in your back pocket, save it somewhere. Um, if it was me, I would save it as PDF and put it in your folder for this class, something that you can come back to all the time so you can reference it. So again, just another resource to help you set up for success. The last three are kind of more specific that I noticed in needs when I was looking over things. So the first one is gonna take you to a YouTube video that I recorded about a year ago. So I might make references to another essay that we're not actually writing, um, but that's okay. Make sure I pause this before I start talking. There we go. Um, so I go over MEAL. So MEAL is just an acronym that I use to help us remember how we organize our paragraphs. So M stands for main idea, E for evidence, A analysis, L for length. So this is just to help you remember how to organize a paragraph, how to set it up and make sure that you're doing uh, the most thorough analysis you can for any paragraph you're writing for any essay. Along with the link for that video lecture, I also give you a copy of the document that I reference in the video. So if you need to have a copy of this document, you have it as well. It's not just there in the video, you can look at it, okay? Yours will be a docx, but obviously mine's on Google Doc because that's where I wrote it. Um, and then the last one, Transitional words and phrases. In the meal video, I talk about how you need to transition with topic sentences, and you also should be transitioning within your paragraphs as well when you're switching into evidence or switching topics. So if you click into it, it takes you to these slides, okay? Um, I didn't record this one because I feel like I made it pretty poignant in the slides themselves. Um, but if you have any questions over it, I will explain it way more in depth if you need me to. But there are just different examples of transition words that you can use for topic sentences and within your essays, and also how to use transition words in our paragraphs and our essays. So this is there as just a resource for you. Uh, also, I don't list every single transition word in this, right? There are thousands of transition words. So what you could also do, if you look through my example transition words and you really don't like them, we'll just go to Google and say transition words. Okay. And now there's tons of resources that might have them. I know one of my favorite ones is this writingsitter.unc. Is this the right one? Yes. So it gives you the very specific types that you can go with it. Um, another good one I like to use. Ah, here's my favorite, the writing2.richmond.edu. This is probably my all-time favorite site to go to. Uh, they have lots of different examples of transition words and give you how or why you would be using them within there. 
So this is a starting point. I give you a few examples, but there are way more out there for you to look through to help you be more specific in your papers, okay? So this week is a whole lot of resources, but only two assignments going in. So the big thing is looking for your outline feedback from me so you can make sure you're being uh, more specific in how you focus and revise those essays. You're turning in the essay by 11.59 on Friday. It is your final draft, okay? Um, at the very, very end of the semester, we will talk about how you will have an option to revise one of your papers, but you do not get that option for all of them, okay? So for right now, this is your final draft of that essay. So you have to make sure you are looking over all the resources, you're looking over the rubric, you're asking me questions, you're emailing me when you need me, um, and you're not waiting to the last minute because if you email me on Thursday at midnight with a very serious question about your paper, I cannot guarantee I get to you in time on Friday so you have time to do your best work, okay? So emailing me earlier in the week is going to be way better for you uh, than later in the week, okay? And then, of course, your writing practice. And I would suggest, and I need to change the due date for that. Um, I would suggest doing your writing practice before you start the essay. So that way you've given some reflection time on that resource and can apply it to your actual essay, okay? So if you have any questions, make sure you're emailing me. But have a wonderful day, everybody.